Now, good news from the Suez Canal. That giant ship that was blocking it for nearly a week has been freed. Uh, the Ever Given, which I'm sure you've been following, is 400 metres long, carrying 18,000 containers, and it's been wedged across the canal for close to a week. It took 13 tugs and the removal of tens of thousands of tonnes of sand to eventually free her, and much to everyone's relief, uh, that's now been done, given this is one of the world's busiest shipping routes. Our global trade correspondent, Darshini David, has more. For six days, it's gripped and confounded the world. But the bottleneck sealing one of the busiest shipping lanes has been uncorked. The Ever Given, owned by company Evergreen, is finally on the move, thanks to a fleet of tugboats, diggers and an exceptionally high tide. Moving the ship was never going to be easy. The 150-year-old canal is less than 300 metres wide. By contrast, the megaship is 400 metres long and 20 times heavier than the Eiffel Tower. Almost 30,000 cubic metres of mud have had to be shifted. Also shifting, the cost. Carrying 20,000 containers, the Ever Given is the answer to our growing shopping list. A similar number of ships go down the canal as did 40 years ago, but now they're carrying more than three times as much. Around 52 go through every day, accounting for around 12% or £7 billion of global trade. Now, behind the Ever Given, there have been more than three 100 vessels queuing their cargo, everything from food to medicine to livestock and cars. They too may have more trouble on the horizon. There is a large backlog of, of vessels that are waiting to go through the, through the canal uh, from, from both sides. And I think even operating at full capacity, it's going to take probably at least several weeks to uh, get back to, back to normal. And in the meantime, of course, the vessels that are starting off that were due to travel through the canal at the moment will continue to be diverted. The Ever Given and its cargo was due to arrive in Felixstowe next week, but its customers and many others still await an ETA. We've got six containers that are on the sea at the wrong side of the Suez Canal. Um, real, the reality for us is, you know, we're a fun gift business, which means that our product isn't critical, but there's a lot of critical products and you know essentials on those vessels. But how to prevent a repeat of this disruption? Analysts say the Egyptian authorities will be looking closely. It's a major artery for the world, so none of us want to see this happening again. So anything that can be done to create a safer environment for this, I think will be looked at and, and dealt with in due course. A pandemic, changes due to Brexit, rising shipping costs, and now this. The trade that propels jobs and profits has faced fierce headwinds. It'll be a while before it gets back on course. Darshini David, BBC News. Now, let's get the latest from Egypt. BBC Arabic's correspondent Sally Nabil is in Ismailia on the west bank of the canal. Ships are expected to cross the canal quite soon. No exact time frame has been given yet, but we understand that they will be allowed through the canal on a first-come, first-served basis. Officials say that there might be some exceptions given to specific ships based on the kind of cargo on board. Officials will ha uh, say that they will have to work around the clock to clear the huge congestion in the waterway. Hundreds of ships are waiting here to continue their journeys. The blockage of the Suez Canal has put the authorities here under immense pressure given the big impact it has on global economy. However, there is a big sense of achievement. Spirits are high. People feel that this breakthrough has, has given them something. They feel proud. As for the, even, for the ever given, it's now running safety checks. It's going to be examined by experts so that it can operate again after they confirm that there has no damage caused to the body of the ship.